Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Hungry for More. Uh, I'm your host, Al Smith, the Pipe Padre, and uh, I just want to say that we're going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, for many episodes, I've been interviewing uh, authors and, um, of course, uh, different personalities on radio and television, uh, talking about their books that they've written and their ministries. Uh, but today, I want to uh, give you um, one of my book reviews. Uh, for years now, people have been asking me to uh, produce a few shows uh, talking about the writings of Fulton Sheen. And uh, so I've put together 36 episodes of book reviews. And uh, I'm going to share with you my first episode. Uh, and it's on my favorite Sheen book, and that is Victory Over Vice. Now, it's my favorite because it's the first book that I read back in 2009 of Fulton Sheen. And it's the book that touched my heart the most uh, because I want to become a saint. And I know that sin is getting in the way of me becoming a saint. And so Fulton Sheen helped me deal with the seven deadly sins. He gave me a beautiful antidote, a remedy, a way of life. And uh, he's helped me a great deal. And so I want to share the wisdom that I picked up from this book with you tonight. And so I hopefully you'll enjoy this pre-recorded message uh, of my book review of Victory Over Vice. And so uh, it wouldn't be a program unless we begin with prayer. And so I'd ask my producer, Kent Kowalski, uh, to bring up onto the screen uh, a beautiful prayer composed by St. Teresa of Avila. And so please join me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to him who possesses God. God alone suffices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to spend a little bit of time with me as I... Uh, give a book review on Fulton Sheen's classic from 1939, Victory Over Vice, here on Hungry for More on the Fiat Ministry Network. God love you. Hello everyone, my name is Al Smith and I am the director of the School of Sheen. I thought I would share with you today uh, a little bit of a book review. Uh, I want to spend some time going through uh, the material that Archbishop Sheen shared with us many years ago. It was the year 1939 and he penned the book Victory Over Vice. Uh, this little book is one of my favorite Sheen books. And uh, in it is the secrets of how to uh, find peace of soul. Because uh, let's be honest, many of us struggle with the seven deadly sins. And we all say to ourselves, somebody save me, somebody help me. And uh, at the time, Fulton Sheen uh, knew that uh, the world needed help and he wanted to provide a solution. And he did that by asking us to look to the cross and uh, especially the seven last words our Lord spoke on Calvary to be the antidote for the seven deadly sins. Now quickly, again, I will just um, start off with uh, how this all makes sense. And what we think of the seven deadly sins, we think of the sins of anger, envy, lust, pride, gluttony, laziness, and greed. Seven deadly sins. Now, some people have different names for those sins, but that's pretty well it. And it's funny, when you think about the seven last words our Lord spoke from the cross, um, they seem to have a similarity, uh, or there is something that you say, hmm, I get it. And so, again, those seven last words are, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Ah, I think that has something to do to talk about anger, forgiveness and anger. 
he says to the good thief, the second word from the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Ah, doesn't that strike a little bit of a chord with the sin of envy? He got in. Wow. Um, envy is something I think we, we all have to some degree. But again, I'll unpackage that for you. Um, we think of the sin of lust. And the third word our, our Lord spoke from the cross. Woman, behold your son. And to the disciple he loved, behold your mother. You know, one of the best... Um, antidotes for those who are struggling with impurity is the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is the refuge of sinners. When we think of the fourth word our Lord spoke from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, that is where we will deal with the sin of pride, the know-it-alls, all of these people who um, sometimes just think, I don't need God, I'm above that. But again, Sheen tackles that issue very well think of those words, I thirst. And naturally, the sin of gluttony, um, it is that abuse of food and drink, but sometimes not just food or drink, it's addition to sports. And, you know, we give all of our time, we thirst for everything but God. So uh, it's going to be excellent how Sheen will, um, you know, tweak our consciences or <laughs> prick our consciences a fair bit. Uh, the sixth word from the cross, it is finish. Um, he deals with the sin of laziness. Um, our Lord finished his task, yet uh, we're missing the mark so many times. And finally, the last word from the cross, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, uh, where Jesus gives everything to God, uh, the most precious gift he has, which is his will. And yet we are hanging on to our stuff, our greed, um, our lack of charity. So you can see, Right away, you go, I think we're going to be in for a good lesson here. And so I want to start unpackaging a little bit uh, from Sheen's writings uh, from the book Victory Over Vice. Now, he penned this book in 1939. And uh, one thing I know about sin is it hasn't changed. <laughs> it hasn't gone out of style, it seems. Uh, it's been plaguing man since original sin <laughs> crept in with Adam and Eve. But... Again, the solution has always been, go to the Lord, go to the Lord, he'll help you. So, uh, so let's, let's, let's go through a few things. Now, the beautiful thing that I've done with the help of Sophia Institute Press is we took all of Sheen's writings on the seven last words and put them into two anthologies. Uh, this anthology, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, uh, contains seven um, of the nine books I find that Sheen has written on the seven last words. And then the book, Lord Teach Us to Pray, uh, contains a few other um, of Sheen's meditations on the seven last words. But uh, we put victory over vice into The Cries of Jesus from the Cross because I think it has to be presented in a, a fashion where you have to not only give the antidote um, through the seven last words, but also give other, um, uh, I guess, ideas of thought. Um, what Sheen does so beautifully is that he uses, you know, the seven last words as the antidote for the seven deadly sins. But he also then teaches about the seven or seven virtues uh, as also a complement to help you in your uh, plan of making reparation of uh, amending your life. And also he wrote about the Beatitudes and how we can practice the Beatitudes as a way to uh, change our uh, patterns of behavior, if that, if that makes sense. So uh, every year Sheen wrote uh, on a different theme, but it's important. I think they all go together. And he knew that he was a great catechist and he thought, you know, I'll teach you. It might take me about 20 years, but I'll get it into you. And I think uh, what I found, of course, reading Sheen's uh, volumes of work is that he had uh, he had a plan he had a methodology a catechesis written and it just was going to take him time to deliver it but uh, this uh, these these talks in 1939 um, really I think hit the nail on the head especially for me I, I will be honest with you uh, Sheen was the first priest to somehow get into my soul and get into my head and to actually make me feel guilty. Um, he stirred that sorrow. He, he convinced me that uh, sin cost our Lord. 
And of course, he went to Calvary. And, um, you know, I've said for many years, we all need to develop um, a prayer life with a crucifix to actually hold a crucifix in our hand and to meditate on the seven last words. And um, uh, what was it? St. Um, uh, Thomas Aquinas said, I've learned more from the crucifix than any of my books. And uh, it is true. The crucifix will teach you a great deal. Uh, but we're going to talk about this book, Victory Over Vice. And so, uh, again, we'll start off with that first word from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And here Sheen wants to address our anger. And, you know, let's be honest, we're an angry bunch of people. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> and, you know, he said, Father, forgive, for they know not what they do. Um, he really does um, rely on our ignorance. And I think one thing I've found, uh, of course, in this chapter on anger, um, you know, our Lord was so calm under fire. He really was. And uh, it was his calmness to forgive that truly touched the heart of the good thief for him to have his conversion. He saw, you know, our Lord pardoning those who were putting him to death. And, uh, but I think what um, Sheen really teaches um, the reader is that we really don't know ourselves that well. I think we're afraid. I think a lot of times silence scares people because you have to look inside your soul and uh, you may not like what you find out, but we're so quick to judge others. Like we love just uh, picking on our neighbors, picking his faults or her faults, but we never want to uh, address our own. Uh, but uh, again, they, I don't know my neighbor. Let's be honest. Like, um, I remember I have a neighbor uh, years ago that um, kind of really bothered me. <laughs> now, I moved, but um, again, he was the type of neighbor that um, did a lot of silly things. I, I never forget when he put a hot tub in his backyard. And of course, where's the hot tub? Right in front of my daughter's bedroom window. Okay, like it's one of those subdivisions where everything's really close. Um, and so, of course, I had to talk to him and say, you know, can you put some lattice up? Can you kind of have, have a privacy fence or something? My, my two teenage daughters are right there. So, um, and I, I kind of talked to him through, um, and I asked him about his faith life. And he said to me, he says, listen, I've never been in church in my life. My parents never gave me any um, instructions in a faith. I'm, you know, I, I'm a pagan, if you want to call it that. And it really just, I came to light to say, yeah, you know what? He doesn't know what he's doing. Um, he hasn't been catechized. So I think this is where our problem is that we tend to judge people. We love to uh, pick apart their faults, but we don't know their formation. We don't know. We don't really know our neighbor. Let's be honest. We don't. And so Jesus on the cross is pleading to God the Father forgive them for their ignorance. Um, and I think that's what we have to have is this compassion. Uh, my anger went way down once I started to meditate on this, um, this whole thing of Sheen saying, um, you know, the Lord shows us the way. He really does. And so, uh, again, we have to um, know that uh, we need to be humble and uh, anger is not of God. Uh, I mean, there's righteous anger. There's a time and place for it. But generally, anger is, uh, it's not good. And uh, again, there's no limit to God's forgiveness. Um, he will forgive all of your sins, no matter how numerous they are and how bad they are. But again, those beautiful words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All right, we move on to the sin of envy. And um, I mean, this was one that uh, I've struggled with uh, for years. I'm not trying to bear my soul in this program, but, um, you know, there's always this idea of, um, you know, someone's either smarter than me, makes more money than me, better looking than me, <laughs> you know. Um, I think a lot of us struggle with envy. Um, even though we won't, we'd probably say to ourselves, oh, I'm not envious. Nah, nah, that's not me. I think many of us do have that um because again we've we've all been wounded when someone gets preferred um that litany of humility 
I'm not one to pray that. I don't like it, but I know I should pray it more often because, again, to accept others being preferred um, and you have to become humble, it's, it's difficult. But uh, one thing that uh, Sheen, again, stresses that a lot of times we make, you know, false judgments about people or we hear things. You know, how many rumors do we hear? And then we, of course, form our opinion. But, you know, when I think of that dynamic of the good thief and the bad thief, um, there's lots there. I mean, the good thief had to discount all the lies that they said about Jesus. Um, again, he heard the Lord say, Father, forgive. And I think there's something stirred in his heart because at the beginning of the crucifixion, he was like all the others. They were joining in, keeping condemnation upon the Lord. But when he saw that he forgave his enemies, he realized there's something in our Lord that's different. And I guess there was enough dry kindling in his soul and that spark of faith entered in him, that spark of hope. And uh, he had a change, a change of heart. Um, he felt pity. He felt some pity. And of course, uh, his fellow thief uh, chimes in and says, you know, uh, if you be the Christ, get us down from here. And uh, right away, um, the good thief said, you know, have you no fear of God? We deserve this. We deserve all this. And uh, he's innocent. The Lord is innocent. And I look at what he did, the good thief, that holy example. And I think he shames us in a way that there's many times when people will attack our faith. And we've all seen it. There's lots of people that uh, take shots at Catholics and Christians. And uh, a lot of times we just remain silent. We don't want to go there, right? Yet the good thief did not have that fear of reprimanding his fellow thief to say, do you not fear God? I, I learned from the good thief to be brave. So sometimes you have to stand up to your, um, your co-workers, your people that you're with and, and speak up. I mean, how many times when pe people speak ill of the church or a priest or, or something that we just keep silent? But there's an example there. There's a holy example given to us by the good thief and um, something to be learned there. So um, again, the good thief saw, he, you know, he, he, he didn't believe the rumors. He didn't believe that his eyes were open. And of course, that beautiful reward when he said, remember me. And our Lord said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. So, um, you know, I think the only way sometimes to overcome envy is that we have to have pity. We have to think, um, again, the person that uh, maybe God has given more blessing to, not to be upset about it, because God knows what he's doing. Uh, he has a plan. He has a plan for every one of us. And of course, the devil wants to use envy for us to hate our brother, but we're called to love our brother. So, all right. Uh, hopefully, I'm not losing any of you. You're, you're kind of getting it, kind of nodding your head. But um, again, she knew that um, all of us, to some degree or, or another, struggle with all seven of the deadly sins. I, I thought I only had two, but as I started to read Sheen's Victory Over Vice, I realized I had a little bit of everything. And so I want to move on now to um, the sin of lust. And uh, I'm going to quote uh, a few things here from Sheen because um, he, um, I, I tell you, one thing I find about Sheen is that um, when you read, <laughs> you know, uh, Sheen, you have to put put it down. Um, you read an, a paragraph and you just go. And so I'm going to, I'm going to give you a few here that uh, I think are going to really um, touch your heart here. So uh, now, um, again, I got to get my glasses. Sorry. Uh, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting older and older. All right. I love this. Sheen says about the sin of lust. He says, we are living today in what might properly would probably be called an error of carnality. 
As the appeals to the spiritual relaxes, the demands of the flesh increase. Living less for God, human natures begin to live only for self, for no man can serve two masters. Well, he knew right away that uh, it's been a dirty world for a long time. And I say that this error of carnality that Sheen mentions. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's a crazy world out there. We're hit every time we step outside the door. We're hit with these images, the music we listen to, uh, the stuff we watch on television. Satan is just coming at us, coming at us, coming at us. And, um, you know, I think what Sheen also said in this chapter was he said, you know, I guess one of the most regrettable things is that not so much there's so much sin, but we just have this de decreased sense of sin. You know, it's almost like it's happened so much, we don't even see it as sin. And uh, that is, um, it's sad. There's so much that we just have, you know, we've kind of lost our, um, I guess our radar doesn't go off anymore, you know, because we've been so inundated. So um, it's just terrible. And again, um, he said, you know, the regrettable aspect of, of, of it all with this increased sin that there is a decreased sense of sin. Souls sin more, but think less about it. And um, again, we live in a crazy, crazy world. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, and again, I, I always think of what Sheen said. He says, it's never the pure that have um, a problem with chastity. Um, it's the impure. It's the impure. Uh, those who aren't pure of heart, they're the ones that say, oh, it's impossible. It's impossible. You know, there's no way uh, any teenager could ever, ever be chased, you know. Um, again, there's no problem for the pure of heart to um, think that purity is possible, but it's the impure that have the problem with it. So, um, again, there's lots of things that we can do to uh, curb this and Sheen said, sometimes you have to unlearn what you've learned. Um, you have to uh, start to put everything in a perspective to say, you know what? We're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And I think we had more of a familial uh, mindset. Uh, I don't think there'd be as much lust, as much craziness. I know when I give men's conferences, I always tell guys, you know, remember when you look at a woman, always ask yourself two questions. Is that somebody's wife or somebody's daughter? And I tell you, it's going to change your attitude because I know I have a, a beautiful wife that I love and I don't want anybody, you know, <laughs> coming after my wife. And I've got two beautiful daughters and I don't want them to ever be defiled either. So I protect them. And so, again, that's helped a great deal. Always ask yourself that question. Is that somebody's wife or somebody's daughter? And these little tips that I've learned through Sheen, um, you know, can help, um, you know, change the world. So we have to unlearn what we've learned. We have to, because uh, we've been trained, unfortunately, uh, we've been sexualized and uh, we need to be um, purified. <laughs> you know? So anyway, I, I always think of what uh, Sheen had said that uh, we need to develop a higher love. Um, Again, that third word from the cross, woman, behold your son, and to the disciple he loved, behold your mother. We need to have a higher love. I mean, we need to have her as a higher love, to love our Lord and to love our lady, um, to desire those things of heaven. Uh, but, you know, Mary is the refuge of sinners. I mean, you look at Calvary, and who does she bring with her? Magdalene, a redeemed prostitute. I mean. Is that not an example for all of us, an example of hope? Uh, she is the refuge of sinners. And so um, our Lord uh, showed great, I love the virtue of prudence. Uh, he was the prudent Christ who gave us his mother to help us in this area. So we need to have that higher love. Um, I think of that one saying, you know, a mother, good mother says, she'd say to her kids, now don't do anything that your mother would be ashamed of. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, those words go through my head all the time. I don't want to do anything that my mother would be ashamed of. So uh, it's that higher love. We have to have that higher love. And um, 
remember that Mary is the refuge of sinners. All right, moving along here, um, if we go to that sin of pride and uh, think of those beautiful words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, you know, I tell you, Sheen talked about intellectual pride, financial pride. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it blankets society. Um, I know for me, it's, I always just go crazy when I meet a know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys that have intellectual pride, right? Uh, Archbishop Sheen would say, you know, uh, guys who have intellectual pride, it's so thick that if you made battleships, you couldn't get through it. Like the hulls, that that's it's that powerful that you know. And we've all tried to convert know-it-alls. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a miracle, but. Uh, you know, I, I always think of, you know, that question, why should we be proud? And uh, Sheen quotes uh, St. Paul, and uh, he reminds us, and, and Paul says, I wrote years ago, of course, we, and we, we need to read our Bibles more. And that's what I love about Sheen, is that in this anthology, uh, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, I took the time to count how many times he quoted sh sacred scripture, and there's 443 Bible passages in this book. So uh, Sheen will always bring us to the word of God. And so he answers the question, why should we be proud? As St. Paul reminds us, or what hast thou that, that hast not received? And if thou hast received, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Is it our voice, our wealth, our beauty, our talents of which we are proud? But wit, what are these but gifts from God, any one of which he might revoke this second? And so, you know, St. Paul is saying, you know, why are you proud? God gave you all those gifts. God gave you all those gifts. And yet a lot of times we say, well, I'm great. <laughs> no, no, no. God is great and he works through you. I mean, so this is what I love. Sheen didn't mince words when it came to pride. Um, and, and I'll give you this one. He, this, this is the equalizer. He'd say, so like, why are you so proud? He goes, and I'll read this because I don't want to miss this. He goes, you know what? From a material point of view, we're worth so little, so little. The content of a human body is equivalent to as much iron as there is in one nail. As much sugar as there is in two lumps as much oil as there is in seven bars of soap, and as much phosphorus as there is to make up 2,200 matches, and as much, as much magnesium as it takes to develop one photograph. In all, the human body, body chemically is worth a little less than $2. <laughs> Why should we be so proud? Why should we be so proud? So I tell you, that, I, I say that at conferences all the time. Let's do this. Let's do the math. Chemically, we're worth a couple dollars. Probably get more than seven bars of soap out of me, but um, still, we're only worth a few dollars, yet our soul is worth everything. But why are we so proud? Why are we so proud? And, you know, we need to give God more praise. We really do. I mean, all those talents come from God. So I think this will really help us with our own pride is to turn it around to say, I want to glorify God for the gift he gave me of, of speaking, of, for some it's singing, for some it's, it's you know, it could be anything. Um, I, you know, I look at my grandchildren and the talents they have, it's crazy. <laughs> I remember my, when my two-year-old grandson could recite the alphabet backwards. And I, I just went, where did he get that? But again, that's a gift that God gave him. So uh, let us not glory in ourselves, but glory in God, and we will overcome the sin of pride. All right, we go into the sin of gluttony, and the words our Lord spoke, I thirst. I think a lot of us, uh, you know, again, a lot of times we think gluttony is just food and drink, but uh, it's more than just that. And um, again, I want to quote here from Sheen, and this, uh, he, he nails it. He says, 
If there is any indication at the present degeneration of society better than another, it is the excess of luxury in the modern world. When men begin to forget their souls, they begin to take great care of their bodies. Mm. There are more athletic clubs in the modern world than there are spiritual retreat houses. And who shall count the millions and millions of dollars spent in beauty shops to glorify, to glorify faces that will one day be the prey of worms? All right, right there. He, 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 he nails it when he says, hey, there's more health clubs than there is spiritual retreat houses. And uh, how many millions of dollars do we spend on hair, makeup, all that other stuff? Yeah. He's got us there. But um, again, this is another one. I use this all the time for my guys, my friends at the gym, right? Okay. Not that I go to the gym that often, but still. So everybody wants to work out two hours, three hours a day. But when you ask someone to spend five minutes in prayer, it's like, oh, man, I can't do that. It's like they make the biggest protest in the world. Um, no, it's so true. We all want to work out two, three hours a day, but how much time do we want to give our Lord in prayer? It's like we're twisting our arms, you know, going to agonize. So uh, something to be very, very careful of. Um, again, what do we thirst? What do we thirst in? Um, Sheen said to us, you know, you need to, to develop a spiritual thirst a spiritual hunger, uh, that's the way to make reparation for uh, our thirst for the world. Again, for some it's sports, for some it's uh, again, food and drink. But uh, again, our Lord wants relationship. He's thirsting for us. And um, you know, there's like a real scandal. I think one time, and again, I read it in Victory of Advice where Sheen said, many of us, will miss a dessert more than we miss Holy Communion. And that line is so true. So many people will complain about missing dessert instead of missing Holy Communion. So you can see where people's priorities are. But the Lord is asking us to cultivate a spiritual hunger and a spiritual thirst. And uh, again, we can overcome uh, and this temptation because how many hours do we spend on the computer watching crazy stuff? And at the end of the day, we say we should have spent more time. And it's true because there's that um, thing in our soul that says, we know the Lord is thirsting. We know that we should spend more time with him. Yet we keep giving him vinegar and gall. So we need to change that and develop a good spiritual hunger and thirst. And, um, Life will be good, right? I tell you, I've only gone through five of these sins already uh, with Sheen and uh, Victory of Vice, and you can see um, he's got us. Um, he's got us convinced. I think that we need to work on this. Okay, so we now go to the sin of laziness, and um, that uh, sin I think haunts a lot of us because there's physical laziness, and then there's spiritual sloth, and I think it's the spiritual sloth that we really need to. Um, be careful of. Okay. Um, now, again, I want to quote Sheen here. He goes, there are two roads through this world and two gates into the future, future life. He challenges, enter ye in the narrow, through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there are who go in there. How narrow is the gate and straight is the way that leads to life, and few there are that find it. Now, here's what I love. He says, heaven is built on a hill. It's built on a hill. There's only one way. You got to climb. You got to climb, okay? Um, and that that is something I remember all the time. Heaven's built on a hill. You got to climb. You, you don't... <laughs> You don't slide in. You got to climb. Got to climb. Now I'll continue. He would. He would remind us. He says, um, 
Those who are too lazy to mount, mount the hill can miss its capture, as well as the evil who refuse to seek it. Let no one think that he can be totally indifferent to God in this life and somehow suddenly develop a capacity for him at the moment of death. And, and that is, those are um, scary words, but true, but true. Again, when he says that you're to suddenly, how do you think you're going to suddenly develop a capacity for heaven? Um, if you never even thought of heaven or, you know, plan for heaven, um, it's not just something that you think is going to magically um, uh, happen, you know. Heaven is for those who aspire to heaven. Um, she, again, he, he nails it here. He says, where will the capacity for heaven come from if we've neglected it here on earth? This is a beautiful example. He says, a man cannot suddenly walk into a lecture room on higher mathematics and be thrilled by its equations if all during life he neglected to develop a taste for mathematics. A heaven of poets would be a hell to those who never learned to love poetry. And a heaven of divine truth, righteousness, and justice would be a hell to those who um, studious, studiously cultivated those virtues here below heaven is only for those who work for heaven got that heaven is only for those who work for heaven and i think if that that scared me okay when i i heard that i said i got it i got to shape up i got to shape up i got to start thinking about heaven and working towards heaven and i think that's one of these sobering things especially about laziness we need to, to get away from spiritual sloth. We need to get back to our devotions, read our Bible, make time for the Lord, and uh, overcome um, this spiritual sloth. We need to work for a completed life, a completed life. What do they say? Get her done. Get her done. Uh, so there we go. Okay. And also, too, that, you know, we would never die too soon. I always think that what's so beautiful about our blessed Lord is that although he died at 33, no one ever says that he died too young. Today, if a 33-year-old man dies or a 33-year-old woman dies, we would say, oh, they died way too young. But yet our Lord, he never gets put into that category of dying too young because he had a completed life. He completed his mission. He came in the world to die. That was his mission, to die on the cross for us. And so he had a completed life. And he's also saying to us, I want you to have a completed life too. And I believe in my heart of hearts, he gives us some extra time. Uh, he allows us to work out our salvation in fear and trembling again. But we have to have that in our mind. I want to have a completed life. And so by God's grace, he will do that. But avoid spiritual sloth okay <laughs> and work towards having a, co a completed life all right uh the last sin now the sin of greed and um i'll never forget when sheen said years ago he said you know in a man's life he say the sin of a young man is lust that's you know the struggles of young men and the sin of a middle-aged man is it's usually power, prestige, position, you know, wanted to get that corporate, uh, you know, big job, wants to make something of his life. But it's, it's always that, you know, pride and position. But he said the sin of an old man is usually greed, usually greed. Because, you know, he's worked very hard, he gets possessive. And you see sometimes in the elderly, again, they're worried about the future. Will they have enough? And so they can become a little bit possessive or a little bit greedy. And so I, I always be mindful of that. Uh, many of you that are watching might uh, understand and, and say, yeah, I do get a little greedy sometimes, a little coveted this. Um, I can't say that word five times fast, but still, I think of uh, you know, what St. Paul tells us, and I'll quote this again uh, from First Timothy. He says, the desire for money is the root of all evil, 
which some coveting have erred from the faith. Uh, you know, we have to be very careful. Um, the man, and this is Shane writing here, he says, the man who unduly loves riches is a fallen man because of a bad exchange. He might have had heaven through his generosity, and he has only the earth he could have, he could have he kept his soul. But he sold it for material things. And we see people have that deep regret. They have millions and millions of dollars in the end, but no relationship with Christ. Nothing, you know. And, um, you know, the death of our Lord on the cross reveals that we are meant to be perpetually dissatisfied here below. Wow. When I, when I first read that, I said, what? Dissatisfied? But Sheen writes, he says, if earth were meant to be a paradise, then he who made it would never have taken leave of it on Good Friday. The commending of the Spirit to the Father was at the same time the refusal to command it to the earth. The completion or fulfillment of life is heaven, not on earth. But our Lord left this earth. He left this earth to, of course, um, build a room for you and me and for everyone in heaven. He's gone to prepare a place for us. Our Lord said in his last word, you know, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And But what he is saying is that Nowhere else can we be satisfied except in God. It is absolutely impossible for us to be perfectly happy here below. Nothing proves this more than disappointment. One might also say that the essence of life is disappointment. We look forward to a position at work, to marriage, to owning our own company to power, to popularity, to wealth. And when we attain it, we have to admit that if we're honest, that they never come up to our expectations. It's true. The tragedy of the modern life is that so many put their pleasures and desires rather than discovery. Having lost the one purpose of human living, and that's namely God. They seek substitutes in the petty things of earth. I mean, these are powerful words that Sheen gives us uh, to really chew on. Um, we covet our own stuff, our time, and yet Jesus leads by example. At that very last moment, he was saving the best to last. He was saving his holy will. And he said, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And, you know, again, the more ties we have to this earth, the harder it's going to be for us to leave. I'll say that again. The more ties that we have to this earth, the harder it's going to be for us to leave. And, um, again, we have to learn detachment. Detachment. And uh, be um, careful to avoid the sin of greed sin of greed. God gave us all these gifts. He gave them uh, for us to be stewards and, uh, you know, to share our time, talent, and treasure. They're all his. So why be greedy? Why be greedy? So again, so you can see there, seven deadly sins, seven words um, that our Lord spoke from the cross as the antidote to help us um, to amend our lives. And uh, I tell you, Sheen has touched hundreds of thousands of souls with this little book, Victory Over Vice, and it's available through Sophia Institute Press. But uh, if you'd like to, of course, uh, compliment that reading, uh, this, this book, uh, Victory Over Vice, is included in this anthology, The Cries of Jesus for, of the Cross, The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, uh, a Fulton Sheen anthology. So um, again, Pick up a copy uh, if you haven't already and uh, read your sheen. So, hope you enjoyed my book review on Victory Over Vice. I just scratched the surface, but uh, I think there's something for everyone. So, 
everyone. I, I will do some more book reviews in the future. Um, I, I plan to do all 66 books. I want to, I want to do that for you as a gift. And um, we all need to, to know that Sheen cared deeply about us. He did. And this is why he pro preached and taught and he just loved us because he knew what was ailing us. And I always say he had the secret weapon and that he heard tens of thousands of confessions over the years. So he heard what was hurting us. And of course he provided the solution, the remedy, and that was his writing. So uh, he loves us. He truly does love us. So uh, I want to share the love of the School of Sheen and Sheen's writing. So visit me on uh, my website, bishopsheentoday.com. Uh, there you'll find over 100 YouTube videos, uh, you know, close to 10 years of radio shows that I've done, uh, a few free downloadable, downloadable books. It's all there, and it's all free. I love that word free. So bishopsheentoday.com, visit it. And, of course, visit Sophia Institute Press to buy a couple of Bishop Sheen's fine books. And uh, everyone, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and bring you peace. We'll see you next time. God love you.